Hello, thank you for joining me today. Today, I'm responding to a comment that I received on one of my recent videos. The recent video was about writing a grid system that had a martingale factor to aid in recovery when the trades went out of the money. The comment was actually against the first video in that series, uh, and I have two videos, so I've chosen to pick up the code from the second video in the series. And the main difference between the first video and the second is that I introduced what I call a recovery factor, where you were able to set a maximum amount that the price had to retrace before you could close all of the trades. But the comment, as you can see here, what if you expand the grid on the losing side, but the same calculation for the lot increase to mitigate the loss build up on a strong trend? So the idea is that if you have a standard sized grid, then as you go further and further out of the money, you're placing more and more trades and they're all losing trades. So this suggestion is if you place them further apart, then if there's a strong trend, then you won't place as many trades. So the easiest way to do this is just to write some code and test it to see what happens. So we'll get straight into the code now. I'll do that and then I'm going to run a number of tests. So what I'm going to do is modify the code slightly so that I can actually run different combinations of the settings and then we'll run a number of tests and just see what comes out. But this is in no way an exhaustive test. So take the code and run your own tests if you think there are other combinations. Now I have the code open here. I, this is exactly the same code that I had in the Martingale grid in the last video. All I've done, I've changed the folder name, changed the name of the expert, uh, just changed this little comment here, updated the version to 3, and then I think I've also changed down here in the inputs uh, the comment. I haven't changed that, so I'll just do that. So apart from those minor cosmetic type changes, nothing here is different. Uh, I'm also going to just set the default on this take profit pips to the same as the grid size for the demonstration. Okay, uh, now I did say in the past that this was not the most efficient piece of code. What I'm effectively doing is going out and updating the position data, the summaries, the average price on every tick, even though nothing has changed. Because I'm going to run several tests on this and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, I'm just going to make a performance improvement for that. And the first step will be to take these out from local variables and just make them global variables. So I've defined the two global variables here, buy data and sell data. I just initialize them in the on init function. That means I need to remove those two, but at the same time, I need to change all of this buy data and sell data to the global variable names because you'll notice that when I made them global variables, I changed the case of the first letter. I'm also not going to have get position data here being called in every tick because obviously that's the performance improvement I want to make. So what I'm going to do here is use the on trade transaction function of MetaTrader 5. If you're trying to copy this and modify it for MetaTrader 4, that event handler on trade transaction doesn't exist. Uh, what I have used in the past for this type of thing is to simply maintain a global variable that is a count of the number of positions, or in the case of MetaTrader 4, the number of orders that are open. And every time that is different to my global variable, so if orders total is not equal to the global variable, my orders count, that's when I'll call this get position data and that picks up every time there's a new trade or a closed trade. But for now, I'll just remove that and I'll add in here the handler for the on trade transaction. So on trade transaction, a standard event handler, I'm using this trans argument, which is the trade transaction. If the trans dot symbol is not equal to the chart symbol, because I'm running this expert for the chart symbol. Uh, now, for my tests, that doesn't really matter because I'm only running one symbol. But if you're running this live, then you might have other expert advisors, other charts open. So you want to filter out anything that's not for the current symbol. Um, and I'm also filtering out anything that is not trade transaction deal add, which is either a new position being opened, or it could be the deal when a position is closed because of hitting take profit or stop loss. So basically these two lines mean that by the time I get here, 
something has happened for the current chart symbol that means I have either a new or closed a position. Now it might be that it's a different expert advisor doing that, so there will be a certain amount of calling this posi get position data when it's not needed, but that's relatively minor. And as I said, I'm running this in a strategy tester. This will only happen for trades that I'm making through the strategy tester. So that minimizes the number of times I'm calling get position data, and that will help with the performance when I'm running tests. The next thing I want to do, again, because I'm going to run multiple tests and I want to do some comparisons, I'm going to add a flag that says whether I'm going to use averaging. This expert is built to always average the losing trades together so they can close them as a block. I'm going to have a flag so you can turn that on and off, and that way I can run a test where I see what happens if there is no averaging. So the first step will be just to add an input where I'm setting that flag. And then here in the on tick, if I'm not using averaging, then I don't need to call update take profit. Then in open trade, I originally had take profit always being set to zero, but if I'm not using averaging, then I can just set the take profit every time a trade is opened. And so what I'll be doing is setting the take profit to one profit level, which if I go back to the beginning here, you remember that I have this take profit pips, uh, and I've now changed the default for that to the same as the grid size. So if I'm not using averaging, then every trade will close at the next grid level. So I simply, I'm declaring this take profit price, which defaults to zero. If I'm not using averaging, then I'll set that to open price plus or minus the take profit. Uh, and of course, normalize double. And then I just need to place that into this argument of the trade position open so that I'm using that take profit price. And that takes care of allowing me to run this as a standard grid if I want to. And now to the point of this video, which is to allow you to expand the distance between the losing trades. So as you get further and further out of the money, instead of placing a trade at every, what I'm going to set here, um, every 20 pips, it will start to get further away, which the aim of that is to see if we can reduce the drawdown on the grid. So the first thing I'll introduce is an expansion factor, much like this Martingale factor. So I'll just add an expansion factor here. Now I'm defaulting that at the moment to the same as the Martingale factor. Now, much as I have done for the get volume, get volume is a function that simply uses that Martingale factor to decide on the volume size for each new trade. I'll just create a new function that I'm going to call get grid size. The get grid size function uh, takes the leg data data and then I calculate the grid size if the count of entries is less than or equal to one so I either have no trades for that leg or I only have the first trade in that case it's just the grid size and if not then it's the grid size multiplied by this one plus the expansion factor raised to the power of the data count uh, which is the same as we have down here and then just return grid size. So a very simple function, but now I have to actually use this function. So I go back to on tick, and just here I'm going to add a call to that function to get the grid sizing for the buy and the sell. But then I need to change these conditions because I'm not just looking to see if the price has moved more than the grid size, I'm looking to see if it's moved more than this expanded grid size. So it's a very simple change. Let me just compile. 
and now I'll run tests and I'll run several tests so I can compare different modes of operation. So I'm ready to run testing here. I've selected the expanding grid. I'm running on Euro USD on the one hour chart, but that really doesn't matter because this particular expert doesn't care about the time frame because it just looks at every tick. Uh, but I've set it to the one hour chart. A custom period from the 1st of October 24 to the 1st of October 25. So I'm just doing the most recent year. And every tick based on real ticks. And I'm starting with a $100,000 deposit, mainly because when I run these tests, I don't see any value in having one that simply crashes out and doesn't deliver a result. So I'm going to set a very large initial deposit, but I'm still going to trade the minimum lot size. And if I go to the inputs, you can see I've left the take profit and the grid spacing at 20 pips each. I've set the martingale growth to zero, so there'll be no martingaling. The grid expansion factor to zero, the recovery pips to zero, and close at average price is false. So the first thing I'm going to test is a standard grid open that closes at every level. And the initial volume, as I said, 0 0.01, trading minimum lot size. I just want to see what it does. So now I've made the first test run on a purely standard grid. So this is buy and sell at each level of the grid. And you can see here the performance results that it really never made any profit in terms of equity. The balance kept going up, but the equity and the drawdown was, well, the drawdown was growing all the time uh, until eventually this closed out at a small loss. So you can see the results chart here. The balance was growing. There are a couple of small dips, and that would be places where by the time the trade closed, the swap had grown to more than the profit that was made on the trade. But the equity was in a gradual decline all the way. And so the drawdown between the balance and the equity was increasing all the time. There would have been a point where this stabilized simply because there was no more room for that to grow. But you can see from the chart above how this happened. And this is a particularly good example just by accident on the year that I chose where there was a downtrend for a quarter of the year. And you can see how all of the long positions built up during that downtrend. We were getting short positions closing, but they were all just small profits, while the long positions were just building up and building up. And then when the price reversed, all of those positions closed, but at the same time, a whole lot of short positions were opening up. And eventually those short positions just closed when the test finished. So this is just the standard grid and I've captured the results and you can see that the profit made on the standard grid over that year minus 1906 and the maximum drawdown this is the maximum equity drawdown was 3736 so then I moved on to averaging and I was still setting the lot size for each trade at just the minimum 0 0.01 but here I was waiting to close the trades until I could close at an average price that meant I could close everything and again, the drawdown was growing all the time. There are places where the equity catches up with the balance, and they would be places where we didn't have a big drawdown to begin with. And you can see that from the chart above, how previously all of the long positions were held until the price came back up to the first long position, but now they're only held until the price came halfway back. So there is a point where that was an improvement. But at the same time, as we're coming back and closing all of those long positions, we're building up short positions and the price continued to rise for the rest of that test year until eventually everything closed out. So also not a good proposition. And you can see here the profit on that averaging was actually worse, minus 2798. And the drawdown was even higher at 4138. So next I implemented Martingale. I left the averaging turned on, but with the Martingale it meant that as the positions were getting further away from the opening position, then the size was growing. And you can see that now I have a balance and an equity that are climbing with some drawdowns. And you can also see from the chart that I'm not getting a lot of trades left over that are closing a long time after they're opened. And the result from that trading with a 0.1 Martingale growth factor turned the loss into a profit of 5028 and also resulted in a smaller drawdown. And this surprised me that this drawdown from the Martingale was 2297. And I would say that is simply because I was able to close trades more quickly. And so far, these are just the capabilities that were in the expert as I left it at the last video. So now I've added in the expansion. And this is what this video was all about. What happens if you set the grid so that new trades that are out of the money grow further away to try to reduce that drawdown? And the chart here looks a lot like the standard 
average chart did. And I'm assuming that that's simply because although I'm increasing the lot sizes to try to recover more quickly, I'm also putting the new trades further away, making it harder to close quickly. And if I look at the actual numeric results, this was slightly better than averaging in terms of profit, but only by $5, so that's really nothing. And it was also the second worst in terms of drawdown. So I really gained nothing by having an expansion with a factor of 0.1 on the expansion. So then I just thought I would try something else. And I changed the Martingale factor to 0.2 and left the expansion at 0.1. And here I got a better result. You can see that trades are not being held for as long. Uh, although I do have quite a large drawdown here in the middle of the chart. And you can see if I go to the numbers, it's the second best profit, or it's only the second that is in profit, 3, 4, double, 8. And the drawdown, though, is the worst drawdown. So the Martingale, in terms of drawdown, is bad. It creates big drawdowns. The expansion didn't really help with that at all. Now, I'm not saying at this point that this is not a good idea. These are just the number of tests that I've run. I wasn't going to run every possible combination, but so far the expanding grid doesn't seem to be helping with reducing the drawdown. Maybe running that with just the standard grid or just averaging instead of Martingale, maybe that would be better, but I haven't tried every combination as I said. But then just to round this out, I thought I will try just the Martingale 0.2 without expansion. So here's the result for that. A much smoother line. I get occasional drawdowns, but they come back and the equity very closely follows the balance line for most of this chart. And you can also see on the candlestick chart that I don't seem to have a lot of trades held open for a long time. If I go to the numbers, this is actually the most profitable, and that's understandable because I've simply taken what was previously the most profitable, the 0.1 growth, and increased the growth factor. Uh, but it's also the biggest drawdown. And it's not just a little bit bigger than the 0.1 Martingale, it's a lot bigger. So uh, this is a very quick way to ruin your account if you have a small account to have a very large Martingale. And so then I had one more test to run. If you saw the last video, you would know that there was a recovery pips added. Now the purpose of the recovery pips is that every time a new trade is placed that's out of the money, it would calculate a volume on that such that if all the trades were closed at this recovery pips level above, so in this case 100 pips better than where the trade's being placed, then that would be sufficient to close all of the trades. So it's not just looking for the average price, it's simply saying that average price can't be any further away than 100 pips. And it grows to make sure that you are never more than 100 pips away from being able to close out the entire side. I ran this without any martingale, so the trades themselves didn't grow until it reached the point where the trade needed to be larger in order to close everything out at 100 pips. So I've got a grid sizing of 20 pips and a recovery of 100 pips. Again, the equity very closely follows the balance, and you can see from the candlestick chart, there's not a lot of time that trades are being held, so this is very good for recovery. And then if I look at the results, it's the best profit after the Martingale 0.2, but it's also the second best in terms of the drawdown with only a 3476 drawdown. So overall, this is probably the best balance and I've used the expansion of a 0.1 in here as well. So although the trades are getting further away, I'm making them larger to make up for that gap so that I'm still only maximum 100 pips away from closing everything. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of all of the possible combinations and all of the possible values that you can use in here, but feel free to get this code. There'll be a link in the description where you can find it. Uh, download the code and run your own tests and see what you make of this. If this has been useful to you, click the like button. It helps the channel and it helps other people to find this information. And then if you click subscribe and click the bell icon, you'll be notified when we release new videos. Thank you for watching.